Welcome to worship at Camarillo United Methodist Church. We are glad to be joining together 
uh, on this on this day to uh, worship together um, for worship, whether you are online uh, joining us um, through the internet or in person. How wonderful it is as uh, people are still coming in. It is a wonderful day as we gather together. Again, I want to take a moment to remind you to uh, take a moment to to fill out the connection card, which is the back portion of your bulletin. Um, if, even if you're a regular attender, uh, if you can just uh, at least write your name, it will help uh, the front office just know of your attendance. So again, um, um, you can just fill out your name on the, uh, the inside portion of the connection card and just have it ready for the ushers during the offering time. And for those who are worshiping online, um, I invite you to go to our church website at camarillaumc.org to fill out the connection card. There's a link there. And you also to download the worship bulletin for today uh, so they can follow along in the worship service. Again, if you are new to our worship this morning, extend a special welcome to you. Um, again, uh, visit our church website at camarillaumc.org to learn more about our church. And we hope that you worship with us regularly and consider making uh, Camarillo UMC your home church. Now, as we begin, I have a, a few announcements to share with you. We are always grateful for the gift of altar flowers, and today we have a few arrangements. The first arrangement is uh, presented by Fred Phipps in loving memory of Doris Phipps. May God uh, continue to bless us with wonderful memories of those who have passed on. <laughs> and then our, uh, the second arrangement is in celebration of Drs. Lee and Ruth Truman. It is in celebration of their 69th wedding anniversary. We truly congratulate them. I know they're uh, joining us in worship online, so uh, definitely we, we congratulate them and pray uh, continual blessings, um, God's blessing upon them for many more years of happiness. And we also have a rosebud on the altar, and that rosebud is for Jack Cyrus Graham, born on June 4th. I think that was Friday. He is the sixth grandson, number six, uh, for Peggy and Paul Graham. Uh, may God bless Cyrus uh, with a life full of joy, and may he grow to know the fullness of God's love. So we truly uh, congratulate Paul and Peggy for uh, number six. I'm not going to go and have a competition here, but that's pretty high up there. So <laughs> next Sunday we will be recognizing our graduates. And so if you have a family member um, who is graduating from high school or college, we invite you to let us know. Uh, email Ms. Christie um, at uh, vankiersdalesfamily at gmail.com. Her email is, of course, on our website um, so that we can list them in the bulletin for next week. And so, uh, again, if you have a family member who will be graduating from high school or college or any um, graduate level, just let us know. Also next week, we will be celebrating our, it will be our Confirmation Sunday. This year we have seven youth who will be coming forward to become full members of this church. And so we are very excited for next Sunday. Uh, be sure to be here to celebrate with us next week. And then we have a wonderful celebration coming up on June 27th. After worship, we will be having a picnic concert in our uh, Friendship Garden with pops music to, uh, as a start of our summer season. We will be providing hot dogs. So we'll be grilling the hot dogs and we'll be providing the drinks. We even have Mr. Stoffy coming to um, pass out free ice cream cones. All you need to do is bring your sides, okay? Now it is not potluck, we're quite not there yet. So just bring your, um, your own sides for your family and, and those close to you, but it will truly be a great celebration. And if anyone wishes to donate to underwrite some of that cost, you can just um, um, send it into the church office and uh, note it as the Pops concert. Lastly, we are almost full with our Crescendo Music Camp that's coming up in August. Um, we have uh, uh, spots for 48 or 50 children, and I think we only have like four spots left. However, there is a glitch on the website, so if you registered, but have not received a confirmation email from Ms. Christie, please email her to confirm that uh, your registration has gone through. All right, with that, let us all uh, continue in our worship service. 
I invite Luvi up to sing for us, uh, sing praise to God who reigns above. Again, let, let us reflect upon the music. Um, and of course, you can always hum along. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the first book of Samuel, chapter 8, verses 4 to 11 and 16 through 20. Listen to a story of the people of Israel desiring a king like other nations. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also are they doing to you. Now then listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you've chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we may also be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. May the Lord add his blessing on the reading of God's word. Amen. All right, it's time for kids. Come on. Ready? All right. 
we have carrots. Yeah. Yes. And we have candy. The ultimate temptation. Go ahead and grab your carrots if you like. And temptation is what really gets us going. So have a seat. We have a, uh, a team, uh, a w wonderful prayer team that meets um, every Monday morning to pray for the, the yellow sheet and to go over all the prayers. There are two ways that you can actually submit um, uh, prayers for the prayer team. One is, of course, through the, uh, the connection card. In the back of the connection card, we invite you to write whatever prayer concerns that you may have. 
and just uh, again place it in the offering plate. That uh, those prayer concerns will then be um, taken to the uh, the prayer the prayer team to of course uh, pr pray over. The other way is we actually have an online form as well on our website. So if you are at home and if uh, you're in need of prayer, uh, please feel free to go online and fill out that prayer um, prayer request form. And that will, again, be sent to myself as well as uh, the front office that will um, uh, field those prayers, uh, to, whether to keep it confidential or to have it distributed to the prayer team. With that, let us all join together. Uh, let us enter into this time of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for this day that you give us to come before you in worship. Whether we gather in person in the sacred sanctuary or in our peaceful habitations of uh, our homes, we know that your Holy Spirit is with us and leads us in this time of gathering. Lord, our days are beginning to get bit busier. There is excitement as we are maneuvering past this pandemic. And yet, there is still need for caution as many are still vulnerable to the virus. Grant us wisdom, O oh God, to our decision making and continue to protect us. As life swirls all around us, O oh Lord, there are so many things happening in our lives, in our neighborhood, in our country, and in the world. We confess that we are too easily distracted and overwhelmed by the needs and the activities of life. Remind us again that you are with us offering compassion, strength, courage, and hope. Help us to place our total trust in you as we offer ourselves in keeping this Sabbath day holy. Lord, we lift up to you prayers and concerns from our congregation. We, lift, we pray for Elizabeth Bertolini's cousin, Nicole, who, have, who has been admitted to ICU for COVID while being 28 weeks pregnant. Lord, lay your healing hands upon her and protect both her and her child in her womb. May they endure through this time of trial and come out of the ICU in full recovery. We also lift up prayers for Susan Stone who undergoes surgery tomorrow for knee replacement. May you guide the doctors and the nurses in providing uh, a, a successful surgery. Relieve any anxiety and may she trust in your hands. Be with Debbie Bates, O oh Lord, as she undergoes tests this week. May you continue to strengthen her in overcoming her health challenges. And we pray for that you continue to provide rapid recovery for Anne Leffingwell, Ellen Onorico, Marsha Yoshida, and, and Sarah Jane's daughter, Susanna, from their recent surgeries. May your healing presence embrace each and every one of them, provide peace and strength to them, O oh God. Lord, there are other prayers that we hold in our hearts. Receive them as we lift them up to you in silence. Lord, have mercy upon us. May your hand of grace be with all those who whom we have lifted up in prayer. May your spirit fill our hearts with hope and strength. May you continue to guide each and every moment of our days. Be with our societal leaders in, in making prudent decisions and establishing, establishing a peaceful world. And be with us. Be with us all as we overcome this pandemic. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all hope and peace. Amen. We take this time to give our tithe as an offering. We thank all of you for your generous support of Camarillo United Methodist Church in its outreach and caring for the congregation and community. You can give in three ways. You may go to our website at Camarillo UMC and give online. You may also set up an automatic giving from your bank. Or you may give by check as the ushers come around with the offering plate. For those worshiping with us online, you may click on the giving link 
on YouTube or Facebook, which will direct you to our giving portal. Thank you again for your generous giving and supporting the church. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. Listen to the passage as Jesus is questioned about his authority. When Jesus went home, the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard of it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, 
that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. And then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven of their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around them, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious, loving God, we are truly grateful to you as we come together on this day to uh, reflect upon the passages that we have heard, but just be in your holy presence. Lord, we are, we are always um, thankful that we are able to be here in your presence as we start off our week, to begin our day. For we know that it is your spirit that strengthens us and guides us. And so, Lord, we pray that your spirit will open up our hearts and our minds and our ears, that we may be receptive to what you have to say to us. And we pray that the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of our mouths be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. So there's this old story about a rural, rural or a country preacher who announced that the following Sunday, uh, he is going to pre be preaching on the story of Noah and the ark. We like that story, right? Um, and he gave the scripture reference uh, so that the congregation would uh, read it ahead of time. You know, so it's one of those where he wants to make sure that people do their homework, right? But a couple of uh, mischievous uh, kids <laughs> in the church noticed something interesting about the placement of, of that story uh, in the pew Bibles that, that they had. Uh, that they, um, and, and so during the week, during the week, they slipped into the sanctuary and glued two pages together in the Bible that's in the pulpit that the pastor uses. So the following morning, the, or the following Sunday, the preacher gets up to the pulpit uh, to read the text. And he's reading from, of course, the King James Version, of course, right, which is already hard to understand. And he reads aloud. He reads aloud. Noah took himself a wife, and she was, and he had to pause for a moment while he flipped the page. She was 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. He paused for a moment, scratched his head, and, and kind of turned, turned the page back, uh, and, and had to read it again silently to himself. Turned the page back again. She was 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. He still didn't realize that the two pages of the Bible had been glued together. And so finally, he looked up at the congregation and said, I've been reading this Bible, this old Bible for 50 years, but still, there are some things that are hard to believe. Isn't that so? Well, I have to admit that that uh, country preacher is right. There are some things that we read in the Bible that just makes us scratch our heads. And the passage that we read today or that we heard today is one of those passages. You know, it starts off saying that the, the crowd had come together again so that they could not eat. In other words, uh, Jesus is working overtime, uh, not taking any breaks in, in meeting the needs of the people. So the gospel writer, Mark, tells us 
that when his family heard, heard about this, they went up, they, they, went, they went out to restrain Jesus. For the people were saying that he is out of his mind. Now that's Jesus they're talking about here. You know, the, the, the ones doing the talking are, are his mother and the, and the brothers and, and the other people. You know, it gives a, an interesting image, right, of Jesus being out of his mind, frantically working constantly. Now, if you are one of the writers of the Gospels trying to convince people that Jesus is the Messiah, you know, you have to ask yourself, why in the world would they have included this piece of text? You know, that, that, especially at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, why would they have a story that tells about how he, even his own family questioned his sanity? You see, the other Gospels, Mark, and, uh, Matthew, and Luke, which contain pretty much the same material as Mark, in their, versions, uh, in their versions of the story, they see nothing about this tension between Jesus and his family. So why, does, why would Mark include this story? Who knows? Maybe it's, it's, it's something that actually happened, and therefore Mark just had to kind of toss it in. You know, there are, there are many critics today who say that a, a lot of the Bible were made up by various writers of scripture, uh, almost like a fictional fantasy book. Well, if that is the case, then these writers did a pretty lousy job, right? They did a, they did a pretty horrible job because if there were any kind of conspiracy uh, on the part of the early Christian historians to say things about Jesus that were not so, wouldn't you think that they would at least iron out or try to reconcile those various stories to make sure that things all were succinct and consistent with each other. But we know that the Gospels aren't like that. They're, they're full of different perspectives that centers around the testimonies of Jesus and, of course, his resurrection. You know, we live in a time where slick communicators make sure that they get their narrative straight and in agreement with others who are spinning the same story uh, before it is presented to the public. And uh, it is particularly funny to watch news reporters try to get at the truth, uh, especially with politicians who answer the party line regardless of, of what is asked, isn't it? It's sort of funny and at the same time, can be sad at the same time. Well, the writers of the Old and New Testament were much simpler folks who just reported what they saw or heard or basically what they thought. They, they, they weren't trying to, to get the facts to fit their opinions. They recorded what they believed happened. Now, over the centuries, these stories get edited and revised, but the stories are still there. Now, there's a general rule in biblical criticism, and it's that if a story is nicely packaged, then it probably got edited over the years. But if the story doesn't make sense at all, or if the text is really hard to understand, then that's probably the more original writing. It's sort of counterintuitive, isn't it? But that's true, because the editing process would iron out things that, and make the stories nice and, and neat. So even the image of Jesus being this wonderful, you know, calm all the time, well, that's something that may have been edited over time. The fact that this story talks about Jesus just being out there and, and having this tension, well, there's something about that. So in a sense, the reason why this text exists in the Gospel of Mark was probably because there's some truth to the story. So when Jesus' family came to pick him up, the people tell him, your mother and brothers are outside. And his response, his response back is, who is my mother and my brothers? Ouch, right? Can you imagine the appalled expression in Mother Mary's face thinking, did this son just reject me? You know, just kind of, eh, no. If anything, this passage helps us to understand that there is no such thing as a perfect family, not even Jesus' family. 
Even Jesus had tensions with his family as well. Now, is that soothing to hear? It should be, right? How many of us, how many, how, how many of you would say that your family is not perfect? Right? How many of, how, how, how many of you have some really odd ducks in your family? We all do. So the fact that this story tells us that even Jesus' family had these tensions relates with us. In fact, the whole Bible, the whole Bible is very open and direct about the difficulties of family life. Think about the early story, the stories of Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, and Joseph and his brothers. Those are stories of siblings who wanted to kill each other, and one did. How about stories of troubled marriages, like Abraham and Sarah, Hosea and, and Gomer, David and his many wives? Those contain stories of failed expectations, jealousy, and infidelity. See. It's difficult to find an example of an ideal family in the Bible because every family is wrought with human shortcomings and struggle. But a, a little child once said, I don't know exactly what a family is, but I, but I do know one thing. Your friends can go off and say they don't want to be your friends anymore, but people can't just go off and say they don't want to be your family anymore. A child said that. And I wish that that was true, don't you? So what do we have here? When Jesus' family came and thought that he was crazy, people began calling him Beelzebul, which basically means, well, the direct translation is Lord of the Flies. Yeah, Lord of the Flies, which refers to, of course, Satan, since flies or baby flies, maggots, are associated with dead things. And so Jesus looks at them with this absurd look and says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. There is nothing worse than to see families and communities torn apart and divided against itself. The same can be said about the church, of course. Some years ago, the Los Angeles Times printed in bold headlines, 300 members splinter from a church. And in the in, in a, uh, article, three columns uh, article, it told about one prominent church in Orange County <laughs> that split over differences of opinion. And it was followed by another article about another church that was filing a lawsuit against, well, against the state over tax, tax status. It's sad when you see congregations and denominations fighting against each other. And I wonder what the world thinks when we as Christians proclaim that God is love, and yet people within the church can't love one another. There's a story about a, a retired uh, minister who returned to a, a church that he once served and ran into uh, a, a, a fellow named Tom, who used to be uh, one of the leaders of the church that, of course, is no longer attending. The pastor asked, so Tom, what happened? You used to be there every time the doors opened. And Tom answered, well, pastor, difference in opinions rose, uh, rose in the church. Some of us couldn't accept the final decision, and so we established a church of our own. Okay, so the pastor asked, is that where you worship now? And Tom said, oh, no. We found that there, too, the people were not faithful and, and a so a small group of us began meeting in a, uh, a rented hall at night. And the pastor asked, okay, has that been proven satisfactory? And Tom said, no, 
I can't say that it has because Satan is active even in that fellowship. So my wife and I withdrew and began worshiping on Sundays at home by ourselves. And finally, the pastor asked, well then, at least have you found inner peace? And Tom responded, nope, I'm afraid not. Even my wife began developing ideas I, could, I was not comfortable with. So now she worships in the east, northeast corner of the living room and I in the southwest corner. So it is with our lives. Many of our churches, our families, and even our own individual lives are fragmented with conflicting opinions and desires. Even in our Old Testament reading today, Israel wanted to separate from the ways of God by, by desiring to be this and that and this and that. Just like with Tanshil, temptation. But we seek to be united under one love, one Savior, and one Lord. That is Christ Jesus. As he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And that's true. No house is big enough for cohabitation by the spirit of Christ and by a spirit of malice or of envy or of hatred or of hostility. You know, for the past couple of years, many of our, my colleagues, many of our churches have been grieving. As many of you know, our denomination, the Methodist Church, has been going through some, some severe tension over the, well, over the past 40 years, but it intensified a couple years ago with that general conference. At our annual meetings, we have discussions and proposals and resolutions of how to split the church with each other, trying to, and each side trying to get the upper hand. In many ways, this pandemic, <laughs> this pandemic in an unexpected way put a, put a lid on those arguments and tension and actually felt pretty good, even though everything else in the world, you know, in our lives kind of was shaken, at least that, those conflicts, that argument was subsided. And I had hope, I had secretly hoped that the pandemic would help us learn and focus on what is truly important in our lives. But unfortunately, as signs of recovery are starting up, debates between the two sides and how to split the church is once again heating up. It's a shame. Because in the end, there is no winner or loser when a church splits. There is only one church, and that is the church of God, church of Christ Jesus. And if I know anything about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit unites, never divides. But there is hope. There is hope, however. Because when we look back at our biblical history, e even when families were divided, the gospel the gospel provides a way forward. The very siblings of Jesus who questioned his sanity at the beginning would later become the next church leaders that led the Jerusalem church after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Something must have happened from this event in the, in, in the scripture reading today, um, Gospel of Mark chapter 3, to the book of Acts chapter 15, when Jesus' brother, James becomes the new leader who no longer sees Jesus as crazy, but as Savior. And I'm guessing what happened was seeing Jesus sacrifice himself on the cross. That, despite being innocent, despite the false accusations and the false trials and the brutal persecution, Jesus willingly, willingly went to the cross. And on that cross, Jesus displays the ultimate act of God's love when the first words out of his mouth is, forgive him, Father, for they know not what they do. It is because of Jesus' sacrifice on that cross that we as his followers can follow 
in bending here or giving in there so that ultimately it is the kingdom of God that is established. Not my agenda or your agenda, but God's agenda, God's plan and hope for the future. That is the future that awaits us. Amen. With that, we come to the communion table. Because this communion table, we are reminded. We, might, we are reminded that at this table, it is a place where all people can come, regardless of differences. We participate. We participate in this sacrament as a reminder of God's love that unites us all. I invite you to turn to the insert in your bulletin for the litany of communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nations, and neither will they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a, a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he gathered with his disciples, <clears throat> and he took bread, gave thanks to you, and then broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks to God, and then gave it to his disciples, saying, drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and across the internet. And on these gifts of bread and cup, Make them be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. And so with the confidence as the children of God, let us join in praying the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward to distribute the, um, the individually sealed packets? These are slightly different than the ones that we used before. They're actually pretty cute looking chalices. As you receive these uh, uh, communion cups, um, please do not open them at, um, at, hold on to them. Don't open them yet. We will be opening them together. you that in our United Methodist tradition we observe what is known as open communion and what that means is that in our tradition um, everyone is welcome to participate in receiving uh, the communion elements you do not have to be baptized you do not have to be a member of this church or any church it is the free gift of God and therefore um, we uh, invite everyone to participate and we do use uh, unfermented grape juice instead of wine. Um, and the packet that you have is actually glut gluten-free uh, wafer or cracker inside. So what I wish for you to do, again, before we open this, is to flip it upside down, or what it looks upside down, with the juice on the bottom. You do not want to open the juice first. And then peel off the top part to expose the the, the, the cracker. Hold it in your hand. This is the body of Christ given for you. Partake of it. Then you can flip the little chalice right side up with the juice on top. And then carefully peel the top part to expose the juice. This is the cup of salvation poured out for you. Hold on to your little cups. 
the ushers will go around during the, um, during the final song to receive them. Or if you want to keep them as a little souvenir, <laughs> they look cute. <laughs> you can do that too. Let us join together in the prayer after communion. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, Luvi will sing for us, How Can We Name a Love? Again, please uh, reflect on the words, but refrain from singing in the sanctuary at this time. going to invite up Corey and Lori Miller. Now raise your hand if you know these guys. You should. Because Corey and Lori have been part of this church for many years. I looked you up, Corey. You joined back in. Was it 97? 97? Like 23, almost 24 years. Corey and Lori will be moving down to Orange County as uh, they uh, um, call it job transfer. I want to blame the bishop, but he doesn't get appointed. <clears throat> but we all know how instrumental they have been in the life of this church. The ministries that they have both led um, from, from all kinds of stuff, even the golf tournaments and things like that. Um, but of course, we know that during this past year, uh, both, of, both Lori and Corey have been instrumental in getting us through this pandemic. Lori um, has worked in, at the Camarillo um, uh, City Office as the code enforcement. Uh, she makes sure to sign off that we're okay. Um, that we were compliant during this COVID. And of course, many of us have been able to worship online because of the work that Corey has done with our media team and getting everything up and running. We are truly grateful. We are truly grateful. We can clap.
invite Don and Marianne. We have uh, a couple of gifts for you, but I believe Don is going to say a few words first. <laughs> There's a fly for them. <laughs> Corey, <clears throat> I want to thank you for the uh, support you have given this church through your skills in management. When you came on to the, uh, uh, the media team, it was, uh, it was obvious that your management skills were playing and uh, you were guided to be here. As we went into the pandemic, we had to change quickly to live streaming, and there was a lot of changes that had to be made. With, Lori, <laughs> with Corey's skills and, and, and management skills and his knowledge in the, the electronics and things that need to be done, we were able to uh, get changed over very quickly. We always had some problems. It seems like a 902 something quit. <laughs> and he was there to quickly get it back working again. Also, as we went into it, we had to, uh, we actually had, we had to set up a studio here. He uh, brought in uh, Anna Benny as a production manager. He brought in Marion Brock as a stage manager. We brought in uh, Matthew Saint to do the live streaming computer work. We had John Shirk and Mike Nelson working on the uh, electronics in that area. And he had me as a backup. <laughs> what are needed to be built? I didn't understand what they were doing. I just understood what we needed to do. Through that process, <clears throat> We were, we were able to uh, function very well. Then it came, it was, came very obvious with a lighting system that was, uh, well, it was at least 45 years old in here, and it was purchased used. <clears throat> and it was starting to fail, and uh, getting parts was getting to be a challenge. So. The time had come we needed to change to the new lighting system. When F Corey first mentioned that we needed to raise probably twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars 30000 I thought, how is this going to happen? Well, Corey's management skills and his people skills were able to put together this program. As you see in, uh, at times where people are brought together at a particular time, you might say, in history. Well, it happened here. We had Corey skills to lead, lead, lead the team. We were able to bring in uh, Steve Funkel, who had background skills in electronics with his skills and the backup of uh, Dave Brotz in electron and electrical work. We had uh, Mike Nelson who was able to do a lot of work in uh, designing uh, the layout of the electron electrical layout of the wiring to control. Each one of these lights is controlled independently. And then we were able to, at that time, uh, with that team together and myself, we, we, did to, we did build this system. The physical part of it was done in uh, just over two weeks. We're... Uh, <clears throat> For an old man, you know, putting in uh, eight and ten hour days was a little <laughs> tough. <laughs> and 
And at the same time, Corey was in transition to a new job. The new job in Long, uh, down in Orange County. This, uh, this required, was requiring more and more of his time to be, you might say, on the job. But even then, he would show up every day, sometimes for maybe 30 minutes, sometimes for two hours, as he bounced away from his office. With those management skills that he continued to give us through this process, we, we were able to complete the installation in a timely manner. Corey, I thank you. I thank you. Corey, we have uh, this prayer quilt. One, two, one, hold on. This uh, has been signed by many people in our con congregation. It's not just the church, it's your family. Both you and Lord, it's your family. Take this quilt and know that we are always with you and you will never leave us, you know? We're just three hour drive, maybe five, depending on the traffic. You can come up here, visit us anytime. I want to have a, a word of prayer with, oh, there's also a gift here. And again, the, the amount of hours that Corey has given, plus his, uh, just his sacrifice, both Corey and Lori, um, it's a small gift of saying thank you. Thank you. Both of you. But more than that, I want to have a prayer with you. So I'm going to put both my hands on you. You guys want to come and kind of Lay your hands on them as well. Let's join together in prayer. Oh, gracious, loving God, we are truly grateful to you for the ministry and the presence that Corey and Lori have provided and been a part of this church. Lord, we are truly grateful of the ways that your spirit has brought them to this church 20, 25, four years ago, and through those times have grown together. Lord, we pray that the relationships built will continue, continue to grow, that no distance can separate us. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will anoint and bless both Corey and Lori, that the new home that they established, established down south will truly be blessed by you. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will lead them, guide them in their in new adventures and in a new community, that they may be blessed the way we have been by their presence. Lord, continue to empower them and use them in many ways. We admit that we want to be selfish and hold on to Corey and Lori forever. But as your ways continue to expand us to new horizons, may you bring about new adventures for both Corey and Lori and their family. Always watch over them, protect them, keep them safe, may they be healthy, and may you continue to shine your love through them others. We give you thanks once again, O oh God, for the ways that you have brought us all together. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I know that they're vaccinated and so am I. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They will probably be hanging out there, <laughs> there, and there's, when are you moving? Well, we're working on that. So. We're working on that. So they're still homeless. So, hey, <clears throat> they can, they, you know that you always have a home here. Yes, thank you. All right. 
After worship service, um, um, a reminder again, uh, our protocol, uh, remain in your seats after the postlude, uh, the ushers will dismiss uh, each group um, individually. And then afterwards, there is refreshments um, in Brooks Hall, and, and, and Corey and Lori will be out around, so make sure to, 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 to express with them um, the love that we have all shared with, with, with both of them. And if you haven't signed the quilt, um, I think there is a, a, a pen out there and there's some empty spots. And so we definitely want to um, have the quilt um, be complete uh, as we send that off with them. Now let us receive the benediction. May the love and the grace of God continue to empower us as we go forth, sharing that love and grace to all, giving thanks to each person, each heart that we come in contact with, and being a witness, a witness to the life that you give to us, to others, that this world, that this kingdom may truly be established under your reign. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.